Juana Bradford here with my co-founder of this amazing community, Miss Barbara Beckley. Barbara, how's it going? Going good, lady. Going good. <laughs> going good. And we are here with our returning special guest, Vanessa Hardy. Hey, Vanessa. Hello, ladies. I'm glad I'm filling my time up with you, ladies. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> awesome. So how how's everyone's week been so far? Pretty good? Pretty good. I'm grateful I won't complain. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> ditto, ditto. <laughs> well, today we are going to um, talk about finding your voice and using the power of the pen. But today, we thought it was real important to talk about the importance of finding your voice, your authentic voice, and being comfortable in expressing that. And then being able to translate that into the power of the pen. But before we go into it, I want to just turn it over briefly to you, Vanessa, so that you can tell the audience all about the wonderful you. Who is Vanessa? <laughs> ah, Vanessa. Hmm. Vanessa is a creative, committed, worthy, valuable, and powerful woman. Um, she comes from a family who believe that Christ is the head of their household. Um, I come from a father who was a construction worker and a mother who was a nurse. So I come from a family that's talented and filled with entrepreneurs. Um, I come from uh, the streets of Brooklyn, um, who raised me and taught me so many things, public school, public school um, education, um, and it's been it's been great. Um, I'm now retired, not tired, and not fired from 22 years, five months, and three days from the New York City Department of Corrections. Woo, I mean, um, education. Woo! <laughs> um, and I am enjoying uh, life. Uh, we relocated to Atlanta. We've been here almost, almost six months and life has been good. The transition has been well. Um, I've been writing poetry since I was about nine years old. Um, that is where I found my voice and put it paper to pen. Um, I love writing poetry. I'm a writer. I'm a mother. Um, I created a one woman show. Um, I organize, I have an organizational business where I help people to organize their closets, their dens, their homes. And, you know, when you organize, when you, when you organize your mind, your space. So my slogan was always free your space, free your mind. Um, so mm -hmm. right now I'm living the life of retired and doing things that I don't need to do, that I don't have to do, but that I want to do. Um, and I'm going to find more joy in the latter parts of my years. And that completes me for right now. <laughs> I, I, I love that. And I love what you said about, you know, freeing, freeing your mind. And I think when we talk about um, finding your voice, there has to be some sort of liberation that comes first. We don't just start speaking our truth. I mean, there's, because when you think about all of the years of socialization, of impressions placed upon us, of beliefs placed upon us. Sometimes it ends up shackling us, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm using yeah. these words intentionally, <laughs> but you know, it, it shackles us and we become um, fearful of just showing the world who we are through verbal expression or written expression. Barbara, um, I know with you, you talked about being shy growing up how how does that resonate with you uh yeah i mean one of the biggest reasons why i was so shy is because i didn't feel like i had value 
because what happened to me when I was younger, I was bullied a lot. I mean, at the beginning stage, eight or nine. So that started that shell to close in in my head. And then, and when you when I think about it now, being much older, and I went through like you said, you go through the process of life. I put that shell in me because I always tell people now, you don't let other people cause you to feel or do because they're telling you, you need to say, you know what? I have control over that. And, but I didn't feel control over that at that time because I was much younger. So that's when I started getting that shell. And I was like, I, you know, I was a shy. I was like, I feel like anything I said or I, I was going to do was going to be wrong, was not going to be right because they were telling me already in my ear that I was not right. But now yeah. it's people said I can't shut up. One. <laughs> Makes me think okay, of Barbara. That's okay, Barbara. They tell me the same thing too, and I'll be like, whatever. I, I can't remember who who uh the rap was by, but remember the rap you talk too much, homegirl, you never shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you got a big mouth, big mouth. <laughs> I remember that rap. That was fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But there's but there's nothing wrong with us vocalizing whatever it is, our beliefs, our sentiments. But I, I want to throw this out at you. So I was talking to a person and they were they were talking about um, writing, you know, that they want to eventually do their put out their memoir. And they said, some people may not like what I have to say. Bless you. And um, I said, oh, you know, our life is our life. I get that. But I want to ask you, what is your thought about the, 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 the feeling of being responsible in your words, whether it's spoken or written? Or do you think that it doesn't matter? I just, I just, I just throw whatever out that I want to throw out and it is what it is. I'm going to say you can have a responsibility of writing if you're going to pick a specific audience to write for. Um, when you automatically say poetry, 99% of the time, my, my thought is that if I hear somebody's going to do poetry, that's their words, their thoughts, their feelings. Um, so it can be, however, now if there's going to be explicit lyrics, then you might want to let somebody know, not for ages, I don't know, 16 and under or 13 and under. But I think when you, when you take responsibility, when you decide to have responsibility for your voice, you don't know who is going to hit. And a crowd of people, maybe only 10 people will get it. But those 10 people can transfer it to 10,000. So, so, so I always feel that what I have to say or what somebody has to say is important. It may not be important or may, it could be important to everybody. Let's say it's important to everybody, but maybe only the first six lines are important to you, Luana. And then maybe the last three lines that you hear of that poem is for you, you know? So it depends. I don't, I don't believe that you should dim your life because I've done it for so many years. And that's one of the reasons why I started writing was because I felt nobody was going to listen or maybe nobody really cared about what I had to say. So that was my way of writing it down. And I was like, okay. I wrote it down. I like how it sounds. This is cool. I got to say what I wanted to say. And, you know, nobody has to know about it. And then when I started sharing it, people were like, with my friends, they were like, are you kidding me? Like, people got to hear this stuff. And I was like, really? You think so? Um, they were the ones who pushed me forward. So I do believe that however you want to say it, say it how it to cut work that is for somebody and out of a whole book you may only get three somebody may get two somebody may get one just like the bible you know you can read a story and then you go back and read it three years later and it hits different 
So I don't believe in dimming the light. Say what you got to say. Say how you want to say it and free yourself. I, 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 I like that. And, and just to put this in context of those who are listening, we're referring to that, that message or messages that you want to get out to the masses. Okay. This isn't about I want how you may express yourself in your marriage or to your children. You know, I want to be very specific when we're talking about finding your voice. It's that message that's bigger than you, right? That can, that can create impact, that can be a catalyst for change, that can help inform, inspire, educate, motivate, stimulate uh, individuals in, in life. Barbara, I know you are a six time award-winning international best-selling author <laughs> what do you have to say i think i think you kind of found your voice huh <laughs> yeah and many more books to come right yes <laughs> boy when i found out i could be in a collaboration book three years ago something i don't know what happened but i just took off running after that uh and i think the biggest reason because i told myself because somebody asked me they said barbara why did you Put a chapter in your first you know um collaboration book what, what what provoked you to do it and i told at that time you know a lot of people do it for credibility a lot of people do it for legacy and stuff i did it because i wanted to be and i'm using this a lot like now these days a lighthouse to others of the story that i felt like would hit other people so they could know it's okay so they could understand that, you know, I feel your, I felt your pain and this is what I went through and this is how I got to the other side. Guess what? You can get to the other side too. So that's, that's why I first did that first chapter. It wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking about credibility and stuff. I mean, they told me after that, well, Barbara, you could do this, do this, you know. But the first thing I was thinking of is I need to put my story in there so somebody don't have to feel like they're alone or hurting so much that there's no way out. And, and that's why I did it that first time. And then I just seemed like I just got the book after that. I just kept going with the, these chapters and just adding more and more to it. Mm. Found that voice. Yes. And hopefully and, it helped to find others their voice, you know? Mm -hmm. and, you know, when we, we hear, you know, and I, I want to turn this over to you, Vanessa, to, to talk as much as you want about this, but we, we hear the push, you know, find your voice, find your voice. How do people really find their voice? How do you know that what you are expressing is really you and not impressions that other people are? You know, it's like you that you get to the point that you know that this is truly me and I'm not who other people say that I am, but this is me. How do you know that? When do you realize that that's that, they, that you've arrived at recognizing yourself? Because when it's quiet, that's all you hear. When you're going through something and you're quiet or before you go to sleep or when you first wake up, that's what you hear. If it's something that you really like to do, that's your voice. Some people's voice are in banking. Like my mother is an introvert, right? But she say what she mean and she means what she says. But when she bakes cakes, everybody knows as soon as you cut it, it's going to fall apart. Like it's so moist, yet it's so rich and it's so good. And that was my mother's voice. You understand what I'm saying? That's where, that's where her love came from. It came from her cooking and her sewing and caring for people. Everybody's voice is not the same. Everybody mm -hmm. can't write. Some people can sing. Some people can dance. Some people can can um, can paint. Some people can do sculptures. Everybody's voice is different. But when you find your voice, because it's really natural. If you're looking for your voice, you pretty much are looking right over it. You're probably not even paying attention to it. But if it's just something that you love to do, um, that is your voice. And I also believe that experience is a good teacher um a lot of my poems tell stories things that happened things that i realized things that i went through um so when it comes to a voice i think sometimes because i'm speaking from experience i think sometimes we're so busy looking 
oh man, what am you know, what's my purpose? You know, what am I good at? I keep hearing people saying, you know, purpose, find your purpose. Let me get some books. Let me let, let, let me read. What T D Jake say today? What did Joel Osteen say today? Um, um, what is what Juanita Bynum talking about today? Um, let me go to a mastermind class. I need more coaching. Like, what's my voice? Who am I? Where am I? Be quiet. Mm. Be quiet. You don't know your purpose because you keep talking. You keep moving. You keep being busy, being busy in busyness. Busyness is not being busy. It's busy doing nothing. Now, if you want to be busy doing nothing, then okay, fine. But sometimes just chill out. You can be sitting, listening to rain. And all of a sudden, when I used to um, do praise dance, liturgical dance, it could be raining outside and then a song would come in my spirit and I would play it. And next thing you know, I was dancing like none other. And I'm like, man, like, what did I just do? I need to remember that so I can like show other people so we can, you know, do this at church. Like, oh my goodness. You know, it's, and it's just something that comes over you. Sometimes you just got to be still, you know, and just listen to yourself. And a lot of people think, oh, you know, God is not talking to me because you're in some mystical world thinking God's going to be like, Luano, this is your purpose. You know, that's not God's voice. God's voice is your voice because you're made in his image. So when you're still and you're like, man, you know what? I've seen this lady make a carrot cake. I probably could do that. Next, you know, you make a carrot cake. Your friends are like, oh my goodness, I didn't know you could bake. And you're saying to yourself, shucks, neither did I. So now you try a butter pecan or you try a pineapple upside down. And next thing you know, you're like, oh my goodness, I love baking. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. And your friends are like, guess what? Um, One of my friends tasted a slice of your cake and they want you to make a cake for their birthday. Wait a minute, I can make money at this? I mean... I listened to the story of Marie Callender. You heard about Marie Callender, the one that's in the supermarket. I that love the Marie Callender. The chicken pot pies. Guess what her story was? Her, where she worked at a diner, um, they were about to close. And she said, well, maybe I'll bring a couple of my um, chicken pot pies. They sold out. And then her boss is like, listen, um, you're going to have to make some more of those pies. And fast forward. She had to open up a, a plate someplace else and start making the pies. Next thing you know, she became famous. And just from making one pie, and they're in all the Walmarts, Kroger's, I don't know, you name it. But all most of the you realize that she started off with tons of restaurants. I mean, they're, she's on the West mm -hmm. Coast. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I know her frozen, her, her frozen foods are now... You know, because I was I was one of them. I love the crust. I love that it tastes like it's homemade, even though it's coming from frozen. But I was like, Marie Callas is pretty good. And then it was Steve Harvey, how I heard about her story. And I'm like, look at that. Just because she wanted to help somebody and help her, her boss not close his business, she ended up finding her own voice and creating her own business for herself just from helping somebody. You know, so I always I always say the best way to find your voice is to not listen to anybody. Um, listen to yourself, you know, spend some time with yourself. And then when you do decide to do something, your friends will let you know, your family will let you know, this is awesome. This is great. You should do this. You should do that. And when you see the progression and the more ha and the happier you feel about it, and when you feel like a release, that's it. That's your voice. When you feel the release coming through, like, oh, my goodness, this feels so great doing this. Um, I was shy for years, not wanting to perform my poetry. And the first time I did uh, was in Brooklyn at Brooklyn Moon Cafe. And um, I was so nervous. What am I going to wear? What am I going to And I got up there. And when I was done, I was just like, I cannot believe I just did that. I had goosebumps. And even now to this day, when I perform my poetry, it's still such a great feeling. It's like, man, those butterflies are so worth it. You know? Um, and 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 that's I, I think I'm complete on that. It's just listen to yourself. You're not gonna hear that mystical voice from TV like it's God. It's gonna be you, and you will tell yourself what you like to do.
it could be more than one thing. You never know. But um, if you listen to yourself, your voice is right there. It's been with you the whole time, the whole entire time. I, I love, I love the the entire um, story that you you just painted, and and the the golden nugget for those of you that are listening. We are here with special guest uh, Vanessa Hardy, and we're talking about finding your voice and using the power of the pen. And this is specifically about that message, that impact that you're having outside of yourself, um, and there there's so much truth in being silent and i find that many people are afraid of the silence you go into their homes and there's there's tv there's there's a lot of noise going on but just mm -hmm. to literally sit silent you, people are afraid of it i know i i don't know if i shared this with you uh barbara but i have a friend that i i, I really like quiet and i think he came to my home and he walked in and he looked really puzzled. He was looking around thinking, what is he looking for? And he said, and he started whispering. He said, it's like being in a mausoleum. And I said, no, that's called peace. <laughs> but it just felt so foreign to him. He's like, you have nothing on. I'm like, I know. It's just, I just enjoy the quiet. I really enjoy the listening to the sound of my thoughts. Um, but I know that that can be very fearful for people because when you are finding your voice, again, like we started off with, you first are finding out who you are. And sometimes that can be scary because we got to peel back a lot of the muck, right? Mm -hmm. Of who our parents may have said we were or the, or the garbage and ash and trash that we may have picked up along the way. But who we are was instilled in us from before we were even conceived. And, you know, if you just trust that that divine genius is there and at mm -hmm. the appointed time, it will reveal itself. Then, you know, then you can just relax. You don't, as you were saying, you don't have to get so stressed out about, I got to find my purpose. I got to find my purpose. Just be, right? Just mm -hmm. be. Barbara, because you're the purpose, you're the purpose guru, Barbara. <laughs> well, well, Miss Vanessa was hitting it. I was back. I was like doing that cheerleading rooting, like, yes, yes, listen, just listen. And, and you're right. It all boils down to that. And I was thinking when you were saying that, you know, you just sit still and, and just be calm and just sit there and listen. And for me, there was a little opposite because me growing into being the speaker that I didn't think I was going to be. I thought at the beginning I had to like, okay, I, I gotta speak like this and I gotta be, this is Barbara J. Beckley and I'm coming from blah, blah, blah. And people that was listening to me, they were like, who is that? Who is that person that's speaking? And they weren't doing like, who is like, ooh, she's awesome. They were doing like, I don't even recognize who you are. Mm -hmm. And that opened a big door in my head because that made me realize I'm trying to be you know, this person, this person, this person, this person, where's Barbara? Like they said, where's Waldo? Where's Barbara? <laughs> Barbara was not in the mix anywhere with their speaking until I was having a conversation with just friends and they said, that's it. And I'm looking at them like, what? They said, that's <laughs> it. You know how you're talking to us right now, the conversation, that's your voice. That's who you are. Be that when you go in front of the video, be that when you're talking to others, on when you're interviewing, that's who you need to be. That's Barbara. That I'm Barbara Beckley is not. <laughs> so I loved how I was open enough to listen, mm -hmm. even after I, you know, I sat to myself and listened, thought that I was doing the right thing, and come to find out I still was doing somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, I, and I, I like that you share that, Barbara, because I remember Barbara came to me and this, we've known each other for a little over three years now, but it was at the beginning of, of her, um, her platform, uh, her Diamond Factor experience. And I, I remember the struggle, the angst that she was going through because you had one side telling her by who saw who she was, oh, you're being too whatever it was, right? You're not fitting the mold. Right. And she struggled with it. And we were, had a conversation. She's like, well, Lana, you know, they're saying I shouldn't be this. And I'm like, but if that's you, that's like telling me stop being black. 
You know, I, this is me. I am a black woman and I'm not ashamed of saying I'm a black woman. As long as I'm not offending you <laughs> in, in, in my beingness, then all is good. And um, I, I'd like you to talk to that, Vanessa, because you, you use poetry um, as a as a way to, um, I guess, to to heal, to um, evolve. How can other people use, now I want to go to the power of the pen, to really start to explore themselves even more and, and get to the point where we can, as we say and celebrate you, love yourself and embrace yourself. And, and all, you know, the good, the bad, you know, all wrapped up in a bow, you are still a beautiful divine creation. I would say, first off, um, Congratulations to Barbara for finding her voice and being open to listening to other people because what they were really telling you, Barbara, was just be authentic. Just be authentic. And when you're authentic, one, and vulnerable, two, um, so much can open up for you and your world. Um, speaking your truth, um, people know you know, you know, in the streets, they say when you're fighting. People know when you're not being real, you know, especially people who know you. Um, some may say it's not you because they they haven't progressed with you. So there may be some people, oh, she's not really like that, but they may be stuck in one area where you have grown. So you have to be careful who's telling you that's not you. Are you saying that's not me because I've grown and I've transformed and I've progressed and I've moved into other things? Are you saying that's not me because you feel I'm not talking a certain way to please you? You know what I mean? So um, I think um, even when you write things down, because everybody can journal. It doesn't have to be poetry. Poetry is kind of how I journal. Um, because I journal through storytelling, like I said, things that have happened to me, things that I've done, being in love, losing um, people. So I think um, your power can be in your pen when you're just even just journaling. And you can go back three years from now and say, you know what? I cannot believe during the pandemic, I found out how strong I am. I found out, you know, how, how how tenacious I can be, how creative I can be. I cannot believe that all this time I have been sitting on making handbags. And when the pandemic came and my hours got cut, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make me a handbag because I'm bored. I don't have nothing to do. And then your neighbor asks, can you make her one? Can you make her one for her mother? Then your other neighbors or your or your cousins or your co-workers is like, girl, I didn't know you could do that. And next thing you know, you were making more money from making handbags than you were from your regular salary. You know, so if you just write down some things to remind yourself when you're in a dark place, like, man, in 2019, 2020, 2021, like, this is what I was doing. I can't get lost. This is this is who I am. So um, you don't have to write poetry. You can just journal. You can just journal about an event, how you handle an event, what, you, what kind of event you're going to create. But if you write things down, you have a place, what I want to say, like you're, you're creating history in your own handwriting. And you can have books and books and books of journals. You can pass them on um, to other people. My goal is to create an email and leave that in my will for my daughter to know the password. And she can go through those emails and see, oh my goodness, mommy was really upset with me this day. And then we went out and got ice cream anyhow. You know, like just things, because I wish there was some things I knew, like how my parents handled certain things, because in those days it was a child supposed to be seen and not heard. You know, and I understand that sometimes, you know, you got to take from Peter to pay Paul. But, you know, I want my daughter to know those things through the emails because I want her to know that no matter what happens, you can make it. 
you know, so you will get real life stories just from my journaling or just from my poetry. So I think it's really important that people document things because I learned in the Department of Education, if you don't write it down, it never happened. You know, you can tell stories for days and days and days, but if you write it down, um, it makes it even, it, it makes it even more real for you and for generations to come. So I, I think that's part of a legacy that we all can leave behind and stick it in the library or just pass it from family to family. Um, there's so many stories that can help people. Just being on Clubhouse, hearing other people, I've been inspired by so many people who, when I thought I've had a darkest day, mm -mm, mm -mm. there's some people with some darker days. You know, um, in the words of my uh, a, a previous pastor I used to have, he said, just keep on living. You'll find out, just keep on living. You know, so I just wanna tell people as long as you're living, keep loving, keep writing. Um, even when you think you're in a dark time, write it down, cry, write another sentence, cough, sneeze, whatever, write another sentence, call a friend, talk to God, write another sentence, write another paragraph, and you will be surprised. You might even have a bestseller when you're done. Who knows? You know, just I, I love, one situation. I love what you said about, um, you know, because we know that, and, and I'll focus on, um, you know, African-Americans and, and other, other ethnic groups, we have strong oral history, mm -hmm. right? But then when you're thinking about the written history, and, and we think about what what has been what was taught in schools, right? Little snippets of what was what they wanted us to hear or learn, but mm -hmm. so much was missing. But now we have we have technology, we have we have the education. We there's so many ways that now we can take ownership mm -hmm. of, as you said, the stories that we want to to tell, how it's told, and leave it behind for the for the next generation and and we are a part of history we are we are actually living history and yes. but we tend not to think about life that way but when we're looking at you think about the presidential libraries right all of that is nothing but their their notes their journals yes yes you know and then it's all archived nicely for us to study and review and and just imagine if families started doing that like you said whether it's whether it's poetry whether it's through song whether it's video i mean capturing all of this amazing rich content that we know from where we came so that we can build on that greatness to establish a better tomorrow not just for ourselves and our respective yeah. community but for humanity overall yes i agree totally i agree um write it down make it plain you know, just like your vision for your life, write it down and make it plain. You'd be surprised how you can help somebody. I mean, who who thought that maybe when they when they made the first sweet potato pie and passed on that recipe, you know how many people are making sweet potato pies? Like, you know how many people are like frying turkeys? Somebody might have did it that one time. How did you fry a turkey? This is what I did. This is the oil I use. Now everybody's frying turkeys. Oops. <laughs> well, on that fried turkey note, <laughs> it's like so I want to let people know. <laughs> she may jump back in, but we're actually at, at time. If you, one of the things that, that, that we're doing and we're real excited, Barbara has her Diamond Factor Experience TV show. Uh, I'm part of, I have my Choose the Challenge TV show, and part of that is called the power of the pen series and this power of the pen series is designed to spotlight 21 women we're starting with 21 women who want to showcase their written work and it has to have been work published in 2021 so 21 women who've been published in 2021 and we're looking for those that have, that are writing about business it doesn't, it's not necessarily your personal story, but it's that message, it can be, but it's that bigger message, that bigger so what factor that you want to get out to the masses. And um, we, this is no cost. We're bringing you on, interviewing you, and letting people know how they can get in touch with you, how they can um, purchase your book. Maybe they, they're so inspired by hearing a snippet of your message that they want you to come and share um, 
at a virtual event, at a live event. Maybe they want you to teach some of the principles that you're sharing in your, in your book. F. Scott Fitzgerald stated, don't write because you want to say something. Write because you have something to say. There are thousands of people waiting to read your book and hear your message. Be a guest on the Power of the Pen TV series. To complete your application and schedule your interview, call 404-618-2824 today. The world is waiting for you. And one of the things that I know that Barbara has been doing with, with her platform, and I want to turn it over to you, Barbara, with the Diamond Factor, is it is the whole purpose is to spotlight and to showcase uh, individuals in business and in life and allowing them a platform to express their voice. Barbara. Oh, well, she's back. Yeah. Uh, so my platform, my biggest thing, I'm always saying I like to be that person to help people get that visibility so people can know who you are. Not just, you know, a list of your titles. I've been saying that a lot lately. I've been interviewing people. But having that conversation, me and Luana, I think we're both big on that now. Let's just have a conversation to get to know you so people can relate to you. And, you know, that relate and trust factor needs to come into play before you even ask, you know, being a client, business partner, friend. So that's what I do on the platform. I try to make sure that we have those conversations when you come on so people can be like, oh, I like what Luana said. That was good. She's, she's a nice lady. I got to talk to her. <laughs> or Vanessa, she just talked about that poetry. You know, you get to learn better. And that's what the platform that I bring to the table for people. Love that. Love that. Um, and I'm putting that here. So and if you, again, have, have a message, you're in business, uh, in life, and you want to be spotlighted on the Diamond Factor Experience show, please uh, DM Barbara Beckley for more information. Vanessa, how can people contact you if they if they need a, a, a poetress, if they need a, um, I know that they can commission the writing of, a, of poetry. In fact, I still owe you some material because you're going to do a poem for my dad. So I'm so excited about that. Um, so what's your contact information? Okay, for uh, poetry, for my one woman show, you can reach me at uh, Poetic Locks 2, P O E T I C, like Charles, L O X, like X ray, number two at Yahoo. I'm also on Instagram as Poetic Butterfly 27. And those are the two places that you can find me. Okay, so Poetic Locks, L O X, at yahoo.com. Or Poetic Butterfly 21, and that's on what platform? Poetic Locks 2 at yahoo.com mm -hmm. and Poetic Butterfly 27, like my birthday, 27. And that's uh, on what platform? Instagram. That's on Instagram. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is always a blast being with you two bubbly ladies. If anybody wants to have a great conversation, promote their business, what they're doing, celebrate themselves or someone else, this is the place to be. They are authentic. They are real. They're about the business. And um, you can't get any greater love than being on here. They are like, they are the same here on camera and off camera. And it was a blessing to meet Luana on Clubhouse. How about that? And we have connected since then in many other ways. And I heard her talk about, um, uh, I think Barbara said about being um, a lighthouse. And it's funny because I always call Luana a beacon of light. So see how you two go together? <laughs> yes. And I thank you Wonderful. for this. It has been great. I love, love, love coming here. It is always a great experience. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for saying yes. We definitely will have you back. And we have another friend, Carrie. We're, we'll bring, yes. line it up so she can come and, and be with us on this platform too and hear her perspective. Um, just in, again, expressing yourself and, and not, being, not being afraid of your own voice. You never know whose life you can impact what difference you can make, what legacy you can leave. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Barbara to close us out. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Queen Vanessa, for saying those nice, kind words to both of us. We got to put the flowers out there before we leave. So thank you for those flowers. I Good night, everyone. Ladies, Good, Good night. Week. Have a great weekend.